I have something very special today, the AMD EPIC 4545P. This is a true 65 watt AM5 EPIC server part that doesn't really have an AM5 desktop counterpart. You see, AMD has launched the EPIC line for AM5, and if you look at the other EPIC AM5 CPUs available, there is an equivalent Ryzen 7 or 9, an equivalent Ryzen AM5 CPU. And those processors do have eco mode, but eco mode doesn't work exactly like you think. And this is 65 watts out the gate. So we're gonna take a look at that in this video, but we're gonna take a look at it in an off-label sort of home lab use case first, because we've covered a lot of videos with server class AM5 motherboards. They have out of band management and a lot of really cool features. But ASRock in this video gets a special call out because I've had the X600 for a while. We're gonna try it in there. It's not on the CPU qualified like CPU list for this, but I think it's gonna work. And there's also other motherboards like the X870 Live Mixer Wi-Fi and the X870 Nova Wi-Fi, which I have done or am doing a video on these motherboards separately. These are desktop class motherboards. These motherboards will let you use these CPUs in ultra low power. And AMD does have really insanely awesome performance per watt when we're talking about performance per watt, but we're gonna take a look at it in a Linux home server sort of a context with desktop class motherboards. So let's get started. Now you might be asking yourself, why does AMD need to do this? Why not just come out with the Ryzen 7 and tell people to use Ryzen 7 in a server class? Or why would somebody want to use a, an enterprise class CPU in a desktop? And the answer is qualification and testing. So it goes through a little different qualification and testing process. And it really does make sense to pair an AMD Epic CPU with a more enterprise class motherboard like ASRock Rack. Uh, we reviewed a Gigabyte AM5 motherboard that has built in 25 gig. Those boards have a lot of really amazing features. All of the features on the high-end enterprise boards though consume a lot of power that are maybe not super awesome for the home lab. Unless your home lab's really advanced. I mean, hey, 25 gigabit fiber has never been more affordable and yeah, it makes sense because in a lot of cases you can get 25 gig stuff, patch cables and everything else cheaper than you can get 10 gig because everybody's on the lookout for 10 gig stuff for their home lab. So in this case, I think it's about low power and that's why I picked the Desk Mini X300. I actually don't have the Desk Meet. I think I would have chosen the Desk Meet, but if it works in the Desk Mini, it's gonna work in the Desk Meet. So if you're shopping around, check the Desk Meet because it's physically large enough to hold two, maybe three mechanical hard drives plus a bunch of M.2 or you could put in SATA drives. I'm gonna put in some SATA two and a half inch drives. This thing will hold two. So I think this is gonna be perfectly reasonable, but also 16 cores in this? Yeah, I think we can. Now, I mentioned about the power, like the eco mode. My experience with eco mode on a 9950X is that 65 watts, like it really, you know, most of the desktop CPUs are more in like the 120, 105 watt eco mode configuration. This is a true 65 watt CPU. And so that is probably something that somebody like me should do some more testing on to see, it's like, can you really run a 9950X at 65 watts and have it be fine? I don't know about you, but when I'm building a machine for my home lab, uh, current situation, like if I didn't, if this wasn't driving a lot of my home lab insanity, something like this, I would be buying for five years and I want zero maintenance. And part of five years of zero maintenance is low power and you know, relatively qualified. And I know that the CPU is not on the QVL list, but that doesn't really bother me because a lot of that QVL reliance or non-reliance is down to the Agiza, first of all. And second of all, the reason we're doing this with a little bit of a focus on ASRock is because ASRock is historically and traditionally one of the best stewards of AMD features in their BIOS. They tend not to lock anything down. They'll let you try whatever you want. It might not work, it might not be guaranteed, but they'll let you sort of figure it out and experiment with it, and I really like that. All right, so right now on this platform, I have an 8700G, which is great and works fine, but we are gonna swap that. I also have 128 gigabytes of crucial notebook memory. 
Now, I do not have any error correcting sodems, error correcting DDR5 sodems. If you would like to reach out and supply me with some error correcting sodems, I will be more than happy to use them and test them in videos like this. However, I've not been able to procure any for a reasonable price. I do not know if this platform would properly support it or not. I do know that the AMD Epic CPU um, does have like the secure memory encryption and SVM stuff is supposed to be qualified on the CPU, but um, the Linux kernel plumbing when the Epic AM5 CPUs launched was not there for me to test that, but it should be there in 2025. So hopefully I will get to that in another video or hit me up on the forum because usually the information for this kind of stuff comes out on the forum first. Now for the home lab use case, the Desk Mini has some unique features and I mentioned this, but I just wanna call it out again. There's room for two, two and a half inch drives in the bottom here. It's got these little adapter cables. SATA, it's really designed for SATA drives, not mechanical drives. I actually have some eight terabyte like server SATA, might be prototypes, they're two and a half inch. This cannot deliver the power for those. So don't be tempted to get creative, but for like the Samsung Evo or Qvo, four or eight terabyte solid state drives, yeah, those work fine in this. And you can set up a RAID 1. You've also got your M.2 slot on the top there, and that works out pretty good as well. One thing that could go wrong in your off-roading quest for this is that you do need um, the very latest BIOS. And ASRock has been making these in the desk meet for a long time. You won't get post if you put a processor in that this thing doesn't support. And I don't think it supports BIOS flashback. I mean, I tried it where you can like flash the BIOS from a USB stick. Don't think that works. So you would need to borrow or use a CPU, an older CPU, or one that you know has the BIOS version. Other things you can look for if you're looking for the home lab use case, like two and a half gig LAN, five gig LAN, it's unlikely that you would find an affordable motherboard with 10 gig. If you go the desktop route, then you got plenty of PCIe slots for expansion. The desk meet gives you a lot more options, the larger version of this. I've reviewed an Intel version of the desk meet previously, but ASRock also makes the AMD version, and that would be good for this kind of use case if you're interested in that. I mean, to be sure, something that's enterprise class is better, definitely way better, but higher power floor and probably much higher cost. The Epic CPUs for their part, AMD is kind of pricing these at parity with their desktop counterparts. And in the data center, when we're talking about like game servers or mini clusters, uh, having four or five of these eight to 16 core AM5 machines working together for like, you know, this is our small Kubernetes instance or this is our small Docker lab or whatever uh, is amazing. Hey, it's booting. So AM5 really is sort of more popular than you would think. Not everybody is interested in cramming 200 virtual machines on a dual 192 core monster epic server. All right, our ASRock BIOS didn't let me down. It correctly detected our Epic CPU. And notice that under the OC tweaker, basically everything is locked out. There were one or two Akiza versions where they didn't lock that out. So technically you could overclock Epic, but most of the time it didn't actually work because of the fused limits inside the CPUs. There might've been like one batch of CPUs that didn't have the, the limits fused off or whatever. In this configuration, you're not gonna be able to do that. You do have the AMD CBS and PBS menus available in the ASRock BIOS, so you, you can do some fiddling and some tuning there. Our 128 gigabyte kit also is very special. It's DDR5 5600, but our cast latency is pretty good. If you look at desktop memory, desktop 64 gig, you know, DIMMs, especially ECCU DIMMs, the 64 gig cast latency is uh, really not great. It's, it's kind of slow. If you step down to 48 gig DIMMs from 64 gig DIMMs, so you could have 96 gigs of memory in total, the cast latencies look more like you'd expect. You can also get dual 96 gig DIMMs that are like cast latency 32 or 34, which is more along the line of like gamer enthusiast memory. And it does make a pretty significant difference. Zen 5 is not going to, you know, be north of 100 gigabytes per second in memory bandwidth anyway, so it doesn't make a tremendously huge difference, but it is nice to see that 5600 on this platform uh, booted, posted, and trained in a relatively short time for this platform, and it's working well in this configuration. Now, a side conversation, you might be looking at this and saying, well, this seems like a lot cheaper than like the Strix Halo platform. You might be looking at a Strix Halo-based mini PC. Strix Halo, if you're not familiar, that is the AMD uh, Ryzen AI Max 395 Plus. That platform is available with up to 128 gigabytes of memory as well, but it is uh, LPDDR5 8000 and it's quad channel. This is dual channel. That platform can clear 200 gigabytes per second. This platform is less than half of that memory bandwidth. 
depending on what you're doing, that may make all the difference in the world for your home server or for most non-AI and pedestrian use cases really doesn't make a big difference. And so this is 16 cores in a 65 watt power envelope with 128 gigabytes of memory at a fraction of the cost of one of the AI Max 395 Plus mini PCs, also with 128 gigabytes of memory. This would give one of those platforms a run for its money, except in AI and machine learning and very memory heavy operations. Now I've got some benchmarks here, Zen 5, 16 core, and the 4564P and the 4545P. So fourth gen is the Epic 4564. And just to make it clear, the Epic Zen 5 16 core is the 16 core uh, 100 and you know default TDP part, way over 65 watts. And you'll see that basically you're getting Zen 4 performance or better in every case. So it's just like you cut the power in half, better than cut the power in half, and you have the same performance as last generation, which is an incredible uplift if you look through these, these benchmarks, it's, it's sort of nuts. You may be wondering how Intel stacks up here. Why aren't there any Intel CPUs? The Intel core count on this, like on their small plat, you know, they top out at eight cores. There's not, there's not a 16 core option in the Xeon family for this. Total system power, 45, 50 watts for most workloads. Like, well, I mean, it's it's doing a lot of stuff in the background. I suppose it's not pegged. The load average is like three and a half, four, but it's doing astonishingly well. Can't see the system when it's fully loaded, pulling, you know, like 75 watts. 80 watts, something like that. Keep in mind that our power brick here is up to 120 watts, but most of the time we're never anywhere near 120 watts. And note that some of the ASRock configurations include USB 4, you do Thunderbolt peripherals with that, some Thunderbolt tunneling. So yeah, this is a, an extremely tiny and overkill micro server platform that you could run a RAID 1 set of SATA drives plus NVMe plus 128 gigabytes of memory and 16 cores at this tiny package and it's 65 watts at the wall, you're not gonna do any better than that in anything that is truly server class. Like I say, I would love to test error correcting SODIMs. Might or might not work on this platform, I don't know. Don't assume that it does. And of course, cause it's AM5, you can trade up to, you know, full desktop or even go with m one of the more server-ish AM5 boards. But for now, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Be on the lookout for more videos on X870 and uh, X870 stuff from ASRock and sort of the off-label use cases. I do have some more epic AM5 CPUs, 16 cores, up to 145 watts. Well, 170 watts if we look at it the right way. And so I think that this as a path to having a lot of power in your home lab without spending a lot on power is uh, pretty awesome. I'm Wendellis Level 1. This has been a quick look at the AMD EPIC 4545P. And I think that you're gonna see this in a lot of uh, hosting companies and resellers. It's like, yes, buy dedicated or bare metal machines based around this kind of a processor. Makes an excellent dedicated machine. You can run game servers on it, everything else. Because even though it's 65 watts, it's still got pretty good boost clocks, as we saw. All right, I'm Wendellis Level 1. I'm signing out. If you have any questions or you wanna test a specific workload or something, hit me up in the forum. Maybe I can put something together, all right? I'm signing out and I'll see you there.